today I'm going to show you how to rebind your controls using the new input system and this is going to be a complete solution using Unity's rebinding sample package that comes with the input system that you can download. So right now I'm running with the WASD keys and I press spacebar to jump. If I press escape to the menu and go to settings, I have my two actions here, the jump and the move. So I can actually click this button and it will wait for the button. You can also exit out of this by pressing escape and let's just click E. So now it remaps it to E. So if we press escape, now I can't jump with the space bar anymore, but I can jump with the E key. And let's change the move to the arrow keys. So this is a 2D vector composite, so it works with that as well. So we can now use up, down, left, and right. And if we exit out, now I can only move with the arrow keys and I can press E to jump. Now we can either reset them individually as so, or we can just click reset all and it resets all of them to their default controls. And now it will work. And what's cool about this video is I'm going to show you how to avoid duplicate controls. So if we press E here, now in the move action, we cannot, right here you see the console log, we cannot press E because it's being used here. But if we press up arrow key, and for the next one we also press up arrow key, it won't let you do this. You need to have a different control than the previous one in the composite. So here I can't click left arrow because it says it's already duplicated here. So this system is going to support dynamic rebinding, no duplicates, and if we have this sample, if we exit out, now we click settings, it keeps your bindings from previous play sessions. So it's persistent. All right, so let's get started. So I'm going to show you my basic project setup. So first we want to download the input system. So go to window, package manager, and go to unity registry here. And we're going to scroll all the way down to input system. And you see that we actually will be using a preview version of this input system so that we can use their built-in persistent rebinding script. So to enable preview packages, just go to this setting here, advanced project settings, and then under advanced settings, click enable preview packages. Once you have that enabled, you can click this arrow next to the input system and it will show you a bunch of other versions. If you click see other versions, all of them pop up. But for this to work, you'll just need 1.1 or above one of these preview versions. And just click install here. As you see in another one, there's an install button here. And then we also want to download under the samples here. If we scroll down, we want to download this rebinding UI sample package. So just click import here. I already imported it. And we're going to be using their script because they have a lot of nice built-in features already. All right, and I'm going to show you a basic setup of the project I have so far so you can get a general idea of how I'm doing this. So let's start with the input action. So if I click my input action, and I have several tutorials on this, which I'll link in the description, the playlist, if you're interested in learning more. So I have this move, jump, and look action. The move is a 2D vector composite of WASD keys. The jump is a space button. And the look is the delta of the mouse, which I'm feeding into the Cinemachine camera. Nothing too complicated. Now, what's interesting is that, unfortunately for the rebinding, we're not going to be able to use this generate C sharp class as I do in my other videos, because this generates a script out of the PlayStation, but the rebinding needs to be done dynamically, and we can't really generate a new script on the fly. Unless you find some way to do that, then please link in the comments below. So we're going to have to use the player input component, which I find the easiest way. So all you do here is you drag in your input actions into the actions and you choose your default map, which in this case I only have game, and that's about it. You can also call events from this, but in my case, I'm gonna be using this player controller script I made. So I'm just gonna edit this script to show you what it looks like. And this is using Unity's character controller script. So as I do in almost all my videos, I just go Unity character controller, which I horribly misspelled on Google. And I just literally copied this script for the movement and just pasted it here along with some changes. So to use the new input system for this, I had to put using unity engine.input system. And so then here I'm getting a reference to the player input component to get a reference to our controls. And in the start, I'm just doing get component player input. And if we scroll down, we see that this is how I read the input from my control. So I do player input.actions and then this is an array, so we can directly reference the move action, that's the name of our action, and then we read the vector2 value. And I just make that into a vector3 so it can move on the x and z planes. And here I just take into account the camera direction, which determines in what way it's moving. And this is to make sure it doesn't bounce everywhere. As well as here, we do player actions, and then we index jump, and then we do dot triggered, which is 
true on the frame that it has been triggered. And just some animation things here to make it run. And this is the rotation code that I made which I went over in my third person Cinemachine tutorial. So I'm not gonna go over how to make this whole script cause it's not in the scope of this video, but just make sure that you need this player input component and you need to adapt your script to use the player input component. Well, at least that's the easiest way I think it's done. And of course we have the character controller component here with the min move distance set to zero so we can make sure it jumps correctly. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to add in a menu for this rebind keys. And I just did it in this current play session. You don't, it doesn't have to be in the same game. It can be like its own scene. So I'm just gonna erase the canvas and the event system. And so now let's make a menu. So right click and add a canvas here and it'll add an event system. And so for the event system, we want to replace here with the new input system module to enable it with the new input system. And then in the canvas, I'm gonna go under canvas scalar and put scale with screen size. And I'm gonna put in the default resolution, 1920 by 1080. And this is so the canvas scales with the screen size if the screen size gets bigger or smaller. All right, and I'm just gonna add here a quick panel. So right click UI panel. And this is just to make this kind of overlay here. So it looks as if we're in a menu. You can change the alpha value here to make it more apparent. All right, and now let's add in our menu. So go to your assets folder, then go to samples, input system, preview, rebinding UI. And here they have a prefab that we're gonna be using, which we can just drag and drop into our canvas. And you see, it's kind of like what we had previously. And let's click this and increase the scale by maybe four on the X and Y. So it could be a little bit bigger. You can bring this up. And so it's a little bit blurry right now, but we'll fix that soon. So right here in the rebind UI prefab, you see that we're using Unity's rebind action UI script. And so we need a reference to the action that we want to rebind. So you can click this circle here and all of your actions will come up. In this case, I'm just gonna click my jump action. So double click. Then under binding, we want to click the binding, the default binding that we wanna put on the menu here. So spacebar, so the keyboard one. And then you have some extra display options here on how it should display the text in the menu. So here in the Unity documentation, you can see a description of all these fields. So for example, in this one, don't omit device. By default, the device names aren't placed with the control. So here it would include gamepad if it was a gamepad, but by default it's removed. So you can add that in if you want. So you can read this, I'll put this in the description. But for now, I like it with nothing. And then for the UI, we have to drag in some stuff here. So our action label is gonna be the action name text. So we can just drag that there. The binding text is gonna be right under this trigger rebind button. You can drag that there. And this is our current controls. It's very blurry as you can see. The rebind overlay, this is what comes up when you start the rebinding process. In my case, it was waiting for button. So let's actually right click on the canvas and make a panel for that. So right click and create a panel. And let's just call that rebinding panel. And so now we can click it and let's make it a darker color. And under that, let's right click and create a UI text. And let's call this the rebinding text. So here we can just put waiting on rebinding for the default one, although the Unity script will override this value anyways. And let's make this color white. And now I'll take this chance to update this horrible blurriness. So there's something you can do with the Unicode. For example, if you have a certain font, you can change it to Unicode and it will be sharper. But I was having an issue with that where at the beginning it was blurry and then suddenly it fixed itself and it was a very weird problem. So to use the default one, you can just make the font size really big, like 100. You can increase the width and the height of the rect transform so you can see it. You can see it's already much clearer. Let's make this bigger. You can also align it to the center and in the middle of the box. So you can see now the box is huge here for the text. Oh, and I just realized I have a different layout than I usually do since I find this way easier to see both screens. And so now you can see it's much clearer now with a bigger font size. And if you want, you can actually just scale it down here if you wanted it to be smaller, but still be crisp. All right, so now let's just set that active to false since we don't want that showing at the start. And let's fix all these texts to be less blurry. So let's change it to 100. And for the first two, let's increase the width here and the height. And I'm just gonna scale them down to 0.25 and 0.25. And I'm just gonna keep increasing the width here. 
and I, now I can just decrease the width and set it to the center for jump. So this is kind of like just seeing what works best for this UI. The reason I'm using Unity's UI and not Text Mesh Pro is because it's hard to reference Text Mesh Pro in the samples script that Unity gave us. It does not recognize it because it uses their own namespace. All right, and I'm just gonna make this height a little smaller. And here for the reset one, I can just increase the top values and then the right value here to make it bigger. You can see now we can see it. Let's increase the scale to 0.25, bring it all the way down for the center and make it a little bigger here. We can also make the width and height of the button a little bigger and let's move this to the side. And let's actually under the rec transform, click this anchor presets so we can anchor it to the center. So when our canvas expands, it stays centered and it doesn't go crazy and go everywhere. So to do that, press shift and we can also set the position. So alt, press shift and alt at the same time and then click this middle one. So now it's on the center and let's actually just change it a little cause I don't like it. All right, so you see that it automatically populated our controls in the UI, which is pretty cool. All right, so now let's click this, press F2 to rename it to jump action rebinding. Let's now press Control D and rename that to Move Action Rebinding. And now let's bring that one down. I'm gonna move this rebinding panel to the bottom here. And here let's select under the Rebind Action UI. Let's switch to our Move Action. And under Binding, let's click the WASD one, the first one. If you wanna do the 2D vector composite, if you only wanna do one by one, you can choose an individual one here. And voila, since we copied it from here, all of our bindings are set already. And it updates this directly. Now I'm just gonna disable the canvas. So under canvas here, disable it since we don't want this to pop up right at the start, unless you're making a menu. And here I've created a manager game object. This is for this specific use case. So here, all I'm doing is taking in a input action pause button. So I'm doing using input system, pause button to pause the game. I'm also taking in the canvas. We have to enable the pause button and disable the pause button. When we press the pause button, pause it. So if it's paused, then make it not paused. And if it's not paused, make it paused. Basically, this is just switching the state. If it's paused, then we will pause the game, which to do that, we set the time scale to zero. So that freezes time dot delta time and we enable the canvas else we unfreeze the game and disable the canvas so this is just in the specific use case to pause the game and so let me just drag it here pause game so here's the input action we can click this plus button here add binding double click that for the path we can now type in escape and now that is our control to pause the game and we can just drag in our canvas here all right, so now we press play and we press escape, it works. And unfortunately, we cannot rebind this because currently we are using the controls in our game and it doesn't let you use controls that are currently enabled. So we have to disable the control before we rebind it. And unfortunately, Unity script does not do that out of the bat. So this is if you're doing this while it's in the game. If you're doing this while it's in the menu, it probably won't matter as much. So let's start changing the script. So let's go to assets, samples, input system, preview, rebinding, and then the script that we wanna be changing is called rebindactionui.cs. So this is a huge script, a lot of stuff going on here. And the reason why we actually want to use this script is because as you saw, we have a lot of nice features here where you can just drag and drop your input action reference and then add in the binding here. To do this binding like this in the inspector, they actually have this whole editor script here. So a lot of stuff going on here and that's just to make sure the editor looks nice and is easy to use. So once you drag in the action here, it automatically determines the bindings attached to it and displays to you the options. So that's one reason why we'd want to use Unity's script, along with the fact that they do composite binding very easily. Whereas if you were to do it manually, it'd be kind of a pain because you have to keep waiting until you reach the end, but they do that for you out of the bat. And so there's actually a way to also add in icons instead of like the text. And they include a bunch of icons here for your controller that you can use to replace those values. But that's a little out of scope for this video. But if you'd like, you can check out these samples here, this scene here that comes in the samples folder, and you can go down to gamepad 
And you see that when you expand a rebind and then have the trigger rebind button, you see that there is an icon here that you can... But I don't know why it doesn't pop up automatically because it was popping up for me before. Automatically it switches it for you. But anyways, let's get to the meat of this tutorial, which is changing the rebind action UI script here. So the first thing that we want to do is disable our controls when we start the rebind process. So first, let me show you a little bit about this script. So these are just some getters and setters for the values in the inspector and some other values they compute, such as the binding ID. And it has a summary of what each of these does and what it's for. So here you see that once we change the input action reference, it updates the label and the display along with it, which this is like the name and this is kind of like the control. And if we right click and go to definition, you see that it changes the text here. And if we go back up and right click update binding display, you see that it triggers a refresh of the current displayed binding. And so here it checks, is there an action? If so, assign it to action. And if it's not null, get the binding index. And if there is a binding index, get the display string that we're gonna display on it. And this passes in the display string options here. So if there's a text, to replace, then we will replace the text. And then they send out an event to the listeners that might be listening to this rebinding event and it invokes the event and it passes in all these parameters. And here you see they have the reset to default function, which is that reset button. So if there's not any current resolving action, then we continue. If it's a composite, then we do a for loop through each of the composite. So this is the current index. And then we just add it, keep adding it until we reach the end. And then we just remove binding override. So this is the function you call to remove a binding override from an action. Or if it's not a composite, then we just remove the binding override and we pass in the binding index automatically. And they actually get this binding index through here, this resolve action binding. So you can see it has an out var action and out var binding index. And what's interesting about this is that if this is successful, it actually puts a variable called action and binding index that you can use in this local function scope. So you can see we're using these two variables here. So if we right click and go to definition, you see this is how we pass that in. And here it equals the action. So if you equal it here, it will export it automatically once this function is done, if you're using the out keyword, and as well with the binding index. It's just getting the current index of that control using its unique identifier, or the GUID. All right, and so the important part we want is start interactive rebind, which starts the rebind. So here we get the action and the binding index. If it's a composite, we have to calculate which one we wanna start with, which is obviously the first one on the list. So if it's part of a composite and it's less than the total count, the current index is less than the total count, then we will start the interactive rebind process and we wanna make sure to pass in all composite parts true. So this is gonna be important because this is kind of like a recursive function here where it keeps calling this function over and over again until it's done. Else we just wanna call it normally one time since we don't have a composite, which is the vector two in this case. All right, so we're gonna be changing this function quite a bit. So if there's a current operation, cancel it. Here's a function within a function that you can call later on. So this disposes of the current rebind operation and equals it to null. Down here, we will start the rebind process. So this is a function you use, action.perform interactive rebinding, and we pass in the index. So this is our current action. So if we're rebinding WASD, this would be the WASD, and we would be passing in the index for W, which is the first one. So here we have on cancel. So if this rebinding process is canceled with like the escape key or anything, then invoke this stop event, set the rebind overlay to false, which is that panel we made, update the binding display and clean up. Else, if it completes successfully, then still set the rebind overlay to false. We don't wanna see that anymore. Invoke the stop event, update the binding display and clean up, which is actually, this is very similar to this part here. But here, if we have a composite action, then get the next binding index and call this function again with the next binding index. And then here are the strings that pop up when we start the rebind process. So if it's part of a binding, put binding and then put the part that it's currently binding. 
If there's a rebind overlay, make it active. So waiting for the blank input or waiting for input, depending on the expected control type. So if it knows that it's a button, it's gonna say waiting for button input. If it doesn't know, it's just gonna say waiting for input. If there's no binding overlay, it'll just put like this little waiting tag here and it will invoke the listeners. And down here is when we actually start the operation. So this doesn't actually start the operation. This just sets the variable here. We actually have to start this. So down here, after we set all these strings here, then we can start the rebinding process. So let's add in the part where we disable the control before we use it, which is very simple. So disable the action before use. So we can just say action dot disable. All right, and then in the on cancel or on complete event, we just re-enable it. So now we can use this like rebinding menu in the game if the player wants to change in game, which is probably going to happen if they want to change the controls. All right, that part was pretty simple. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna add some, right here we wanna add some constraints. So you can actually add in a callback to ignore certain controls. So when we're rebinding and let's say we accidentally click the mouse button, it's gonna register that mouse button as the control that we wanna rebind to. And usually in certain cases, you might not wanna do that. So let me show you how to do that. So we can do dot with controls excluding, and we have a bunch of others here that you can use with timeout, with binding group, with binding mask. In this case, we want with controls excluding, and we need to put in the action here. So to do this, we need to pass in the device. So in this case, it's mouse, and then slash left button. We have to pass in this string for this. And so let's just copy this a couple times. I also want it to ignore the right button, and I also want it to ignore the press of the mouse in general. Another thing I want it to ignore is the position of the pointer. Position. And so if you want the names for this, you can just go to your input action and then you just click your control. Then under path, this is gonna be the name of the device. And then if we put pointer, you'll see that delta, position, and radius. And it's gonna be in this like camel case mode. So the first one is uncapitalized and then the second one is capitalized and following words. And one thing we wanna add also is with canceling through. So we wanna cancel our current rebinding process. Let's do that through the escape key. So keyboard slash escape. Now we can escape and cancel this action. Awesome. So now we actually play this and we press escape. You'll see that we have an error saying the variable m rebind overlay has not been assigned. So that means I forgot to assign something here. So right here, the rebind overlay, let's just drag in our panel and let's drag in our rebinding text here, as well as the move action rebinding, drag in the overlay and the text here so that it knows what to replace. All right, and now when we press space, waiting for button input, press E and it switches it. Same with the WASD, up, down, left, and right, and it's a little too big for this button. And now I can't move as I previously did. I can only move with the arrow keys and press E to jump. However, there's an issue with this, and first of all, it's not persistent. Second of all, for example, the WASD keys, I can do up, 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 and up. I pressed up four times. And in the jump, I can press up as well. So all the controls can literally be duplicated which obviously we do not want. And I'm just gonna open up these two rebindings and make the width of these texts a little bigger because it seems to be getting cut off, but you can mess around with that. All right, so now let's implement a function to avoid this duplication. So we're gonna be calling this function onComplete. So once we press the button, we haven't canceled. We wanna make sure that this does not exist already. And so before updating the binding display, let's actually check here if we're duplicating so if check duplicate bindings, which is a function we're gonna make. And so right at the start, I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna be using. So we're gonna be passing in the action and we're gonna be passing in the binding index for that action, as well as the Boolean all composite parts to tell if it's a composite or not. So if it is a duplicate, it will return true. So we want to remove binding override, action.remove binding override, and we have to pass in the index. 
Then we want to clean up this action, which is this function up here. And then we want to call this function again recursively. So let's pass in the action, binding index, and the all composite parts. And we want to do this because we want to keep asking the user if they want to bind something else because that's already being used. And then right here, we can just click return because we won't need to go past these other things here. All right, so now I'm just gonna copy this here and let's scroll down until we find where we can put a function here. And I'm just gonna paste and make it a function. Let's change some stuff, private. It's gonna return a Boolean. The action is of type input action. The binding index is an int and this is a Boolean, all composite parts. And let's actually set this equal to false as a default and we'll overwrite it if it is a composite. Although we're gonna be passing this in all the time anyway, but whatever. And so now we wanna check for duplicate bindings within the same action map, because ideally you'll only have one action map enabled at a time for your character moving, and you'll have all your controls and actions in that action map. So for each binding in the action map, so for each input binding, binding in, let's do action dot action map dot bindings. So this is the bindings, all of the bindings in this action map, it's an array. First, we wanna make sure that we're not checking it against itself because it will always return true. So if binding dot action equals the new binding, which we could have passed in directly from here, or you can do action dot bindings and pass in the binding index and then do dot action. So let me just store this up here before the for loop. So input binding, new binding. So we don't have to keep doing this calculation. So replace that there. So if the one we're checking against equals the new one, then it's the same one. So let's just continue here along the for loop. And if it's not, then we can do binding dot effective path, which is the overridden path. If that equals the new binding effective path, then let's just put debug.log duplicate binding found. Plus here, new binding dot effective path. And we'll return true. And down here, let's just put return false. So we didn't find any duplicate bindings. Now here, let's do composite. Check for duplicate composite binding. So the way that I like to do it is that I'm only going to check the ones prior to the current index because I might want to change the ones in the future. For example, I might want to bind a key that's already being used by the composite later on, but I definitely don't want to bind one that I just set like three seconds ago. So if you'd want to change the order of the WASD keys, if you just check in general over the entire WASD key, there will obviously be some overlap and it won't let you. But if you only check what you previously rebinded, then it will let you change those controls. I hope that makes sense. So here we put if all composite parts. So if it's a composite, let's do a for loop for int i equals one and we start at one because the zeroth index is the wasd and then the first index is the w so there's five in total wasd w a s d as an example so i is less than the current index because we only want to check till the current index plus plus i or i plus plus whatever you prefer all right and now we can just check here if action dot bindings at i dot override path so this is the overridden path equals the new one new binding dot override path then let's just copy this and so actually i'm going to change this to effective path so effective path is the same thing this is the bindings path which is being used currently so if it's override path so if the override path is set, it'll be that, else it's gonna be the path. But now you learn something interesting <laughs> in my mistake. All right, so now the duplicate bindings part is done here. We scroll up, you see there's no errors. All right, and now if we exit out, press play, escape, press E. Now we press move and press E, we cannot. 
But let's say I want to bind S as the up. Now I can. But you'll see there will be a duplicate. But now if I click S again, it will not let you. Now we can bind it in what, whatever format we want. And if we click reset, it automatically resets it for us, which is very nice. So now that that's done, the last two things are a reset all button and to make it persistent. So let's create a script here. In the scripts folder, let's right click to create one for resetting all. Reset all bindings. All right, and here we can just remove these two using statements and make sure to include using unity engine dot input system. Then I'm just going to erase these two functions here. And we want to take in our input action asset, private input action asset, input actions. And let's call this function public void reset all bindings. So to reset all bindings, we need a for loop through all of our action maps. So for each action map, input action map, map in input actions dot action maps map dot remove all binding overrides very nice and i just realized i named the class the same so i'm just going to remove the all here remove bindings and we'll actually need to change this in a bit and one thing that i forgot to mention is so the way it updates the buttons automatically is through this on validate so this is called in the unity editor when it detects some changes in the inspector and I found this issue where sometimes it was just not updating when I have a new action at the start. So I just like to, at the start of the game, call these two just in case. So make sure you call that there. All right, so now let's just create a empty game object. I'm just gonna call it manager. Let's attach our reset all bindings script. And let's just press this button here to pass in our player controls. And now we actually need a reset button here. So in the canvas, which I'm just going to enable it for one second, right here, right click and create a new button. All right, and put that down there. I'm just going to replace the text reset all in the button. I'm going to make it much bigger, three, three, the text. I'm going to put it to a big font, maybe a hundred. I'm just going to increase this button downwards and left until I see it. You know, I know there's probably a better way to do this, but I'm not much of a UI person here. All right, now this is super big and let's just scale this down until it looks nice and crisp. And let's just put it down here. And in this button on click, let's add a new event. Let's pass in our manager here. So when we click this button, let's call reset all bindings, reset bindings. All right, and make sure to unenable your canvas here. All right, so when we click here now, Let's rebind this. We reset all and it resets all of them. All right, lastly, let's implement persistent rebinds, which is actually pretty easy because they do it for us. So in our manager script, let's go to assets, samples, input system, preview, rebinding right here, rebind, save load. So let's just drag that onto our manager, right click the script. So all it's doing here is when the script is enabled, it's saving it to player prefs via this load binding overrides from JSON. So when we start the game, it loads our overrides. And when we end the game, it saves it. So it saves it as a JSON and saves it to our player prefs under the rebinds. And so that's also why in the reset all bindings, when we reset the bindings, we're going to want to do player prefs dot delete key rebinds. Since it's rebinds here, we want to make sure to delete all the rebinds in the persistence. And we want to make sure to drag in here our player control script. All right, so now let's change it to E, up, down, left, right. Now I can only move with those keys. Now let's exit the game. If we press play, it keeps it. Awesome. If we reset, it keeps it. Cool, cool. And you'll probably want to mess around with the UI to make it fit better you can try under the text putting like best fit so it tries to fit into the the boundaries that you gave it up here all right so that's the end of this video it was a pretty long video it took me quite a bit to get all this set up and figure out how to do these things which especially the duplicate rebinding which i think should probably be included with the package but maybe there's a reason why it's not so if you did enjoy this video make sure to like and subscribe and I want to thank all my patrons for the support. Without them, these kind of videos would not be possible. 
especially this one. This took a really long time. <laughs> so with that, I'd like to thank all of my new patrons. Thank you so much. In the enthusiastic tier, we have Aiden, DefRaven181, Darren, Rodolfo, Paul, Vincent, and Chicken Nugget. In the dedicated tier, we have Carl Loves Melissa. Thank you so much for all of your support. I really appreciate it. If you're interested in becoming a patron, the link is in the description. I offer source code, early access to videos, and an exclusive Discord channel. And if you're not already in our Discord, feel free to join. We have memes, you can ask questions, or you can just chat. So thank you so much for watching and see you next time.